you know, heaven. But the Bible says, and we've been praying it for years, we don't even realize what we're praying, it's become a habit. The kingdom comes to this world. And I believe that we need to become kingdom people. The Bible says we're more than conquerors. I always said, Lord, what are, how could you be more than a conqueror? He says, you're a kingdom builder. And I believe that we are building the kingdom of God through righteousness, love, mercy. And I also feel the prompting of the Spirit to say that we have to learn to hear God with the hearing of the ear. Now, it's not the natural ear. I point to the natural ear, but it's in the heart. We've got to learn to discern and understand the times we're in. You know, we can't go around life so carelessly, you know, bumping into this, bumping into that. I want to tell you that sometimes God raises up people for specific things. And you need to know, you need to know. Some of you right now feel are raised up for the youth of, of this world. That you even see the next generation, like Christ seen me 2,000 years ago. You see the youth of this generation coming into the gospel of Christ, coming into believing that God is real. I don't know how we got so far away from. You know, 30 years ago, I remember my mother dragging me to church. I didn't want to go to church because there was nothing in the church, the religious system I was there. I didn't feel anything. But today, the church isn't even an option for people. The parents don't have any God and their children don't. I think we owe it to be mature people and bring our children to church. Give them a form of godliness. Teach them about God. Let them make a decision if they don't want to believe. But you know what happens on Sunday? I see it so clear. People going to the beach. People going fishing. And you know what? There's nothing. People going golfing. There's nothing wrong with that, per se. But let me tell you something. First, God. You know, here's the way I want to say it. First, your family. Then, God. And then, recreation. But we have this so out of balance today. We have first recreation, secondly we have recreation, and thirdly we have recreation. And our kids are becoming a byproduct. You know, people don't understand why Sammy, Johnny, and Amy come home and they're the way they are. I want to tell you to be smart today, to think about this. We have not instructed them to read their Bible. We have not instructed them in the ways of God. We have not taught them that there is a God. We have made them antichrist by just teaching them nothing. I hope that strikes a chord in somebody's heart today. So Jesus, as he walked this earth, he aligned 12 apostles to walk with him. And let me tell you something. These apostles were men. They were Jewish men that just walked with him. But I want to tell you, Peter was a businessman. He was a fisherman. When he asked Christ, when Christ asked him to walk with him, he had to leave his business. He had to leave his fishing post. And he did it. Luke was a doctor. Matthew was a tax collector. Let me tell you about the tax collectors of that day. Like Zacchaeus. It wasn't like you see it in America where freedom and liberty reigns. They would bring you to an office and you'd sit there and Zacchaeus or even Matthew would say, this is what you owe for taxes. Whatever they felt they asked you for by your prominence in society. Could you imagine that? And he was sharp. And the, that's why the Bible said he was like, he was like a sort of like a wise guy. But he came to Christ. And he found Christ. So what I'm trying to show you is Christ called 12 people that really resemble me, you, and everybody in the world. From a doctor to a tax collector. And I want to tell you this, that Christ walked with these men. And they couldn't understand that he was so powerful, but that they weren't seeing the kingdom being formed then. Because it wasn't time yet. And you know, Peter loved Christ so much that one time a man gave Peter trouble. Peter takes out his sword. Could you imagine this? And takes the ear of that centurion off. And I could imagine Jesus looking at Peter and says, Oh my God, what have you done? 
But the Bible says that Jesus picked that ear up and put it back on that centurion's head. Could you imagine?